Good morning everyone and welcome back to Honeybee Farmstead. So I can see by the reaction to the videos that you guys are really enjoying all the cow content and milking and things. So I'm going to take you down and milk with you this morning so that we can have a little chat. Just have a chat about what's going on and you can see the process and it's changing every day so uh, hopefully something's different about it and you can learn some more about it or you can enjoy what it is that you're enjoying from the cow videos come along with me look at this cutie look at this cutie she loves her morning kisses oh that's not it is it wait 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 manners miss d wait girl all right we're ready to milk. We keep the motor for the milking machine in this tin at the moment. Um, the next on the farm, all of this stuff is going to be inside a shed, so there's no worry about rain. But at the moment, we're just kind of making do with what we have because it's all we've got at the stage. Hang on, that's the wrong book. Look at you, kissy girl. And cows are super smart, so you can actually teach them pretty much anything uh, if you're working with them every day. So I've taught Deirdre some manners. Back up, back up, back up. Good girl. So that she's not barging straight into her bowl and stuff. Wait, wait. There we go. Good girl. Lovely girl. There we go. Good girl. Put the bucket out of the way. And then I'll put this up there. To start the cleaning process, yeah, we're all really used to this process now because we do it every morning. Make sure the water's not too hot. Clean up all the Step out. Step out. Good girl. I think, honestly, my opinion is that cows are just as intelligent as horses. When you're dealing with them every day, you can definitely teach them things that help you guys work better together as a team. So, um, you'll see me. I'll use the same cue for the commands every time, like step out and things like that, so that eventually, uh, this is our first milking season, but eventually I want to just be able to say it, not touch her, and she'll do it. Or she'll walk into the stand and just do it anyway because she knows I'm going to ask for it eventually. Um, she's pretty bright like that, Miss Deirdre. Now, this is the udder balm that I've been using. A friend of mine made it. It's lovely and natural. And we just put that on her before we start milking. Step out. Step out. Come on. Good girl. So that we can make sure that her teats stay nice and soft and supple. Right, so she's used to it now, but a bit of noise while we make suction. So I just wanted to say as well while I'm here, uh, I've had such a great response from all my beautiful friends and family and some of you I haven't met yet but are friends of friends uh, watching my videos writing little comments um, we're really having to keep reading them and seeing that you're enjoying our videos so thank you so much for all that support um, yeah just let us know what you want to see more of like I can kind of gauge it by what you're watching and how many times you've watched it but yeah, if you, if you want to see more on the goats, let us know. If you want to see more on gardening, we're going to be doing a bit of that today, actually. So we'll, we'll take you on the journey in doing that. We're going to dig up some of the banana pups that we've got established. I've got lady figure bananas that a friend of mine gave me way back when. And I've been growing them in a few different spots around the property. So they've got a few little, um, like baby bananas, we call them banana pups. Uh, that have popped out of the ground around the bottom so we can actually dig those up We're going to pop, pop them out and take them with us so that we can keep that variety going um, We had our first successful and ripe bananas off of this year, so we're pretty excited about that 
get far. Go. There So, uh, the next part is, because she stopped letting it down, she holds back, is that Gracie's going to get tea out of there. The reason we give tea the milk over Clementine is because Clementine's older and she's of an age now where she should be weaned. And because she is a dairy heifer and we're going to be using her for milking, we are going to put her on because she will get too fat. So she's already getting supplemental fed and things like that. But I've had uh, cow experts say to me, it's not a good idea to let your dairy heifers get fat because they store fat in their udder. And if there's fat in their udder, then there's nowhere for the milk to, to be stored. So we put Clementine on a little uh, rope here so she just stands and waits. And then T takes the majority of the milk from the morning feed. She obviously has access to her mum all day, so she's still getting plenty of milk. Uh, but we are going to wean her soon. Um, I'm just waiting on these special little yellow nose clips. They, they go in here and they, they sort of come out from their nose a bit. And it stops them being able to suckle because it pushes back on their nose. So I'm going to put one of those on her. We will wean her completely and leave just tea feeding off his mum. Hey buddy. So he comes in. And we put this put this rope on him so that we can stop him drinking when we want to. Once he's let down, or got her to let down. See how she does this stepping thing? She does that whenever he feeds off her. And I feel like it's I'm not 100 percent sure, but I feel like it's him she's stepping to sort of maybe it releases the milk or something, I'm not sure or whether she can identify that that's her baby feeding rather than the machine. Oops, he's very full on, he's very, very rough. She's not like that kind of time. So we are going to be weaning him soon when he's old enough because he's too rough and he has really done a number on her udder. Oh, sweetie, there we go. Now we just hold him here and he waits. Um, now this is also a practice, tying them off and stuff, that is advisable when you're managing cows that you're going to be handling all the time. Have a halter on them and tie them up on a rope and even leave them staying there for a couple of hours. As long as they can get water, it actually sort of teaches them that like you're under control. So makes them manageable, makes them, you know, if you ever have to move them, take them to a vet, any of those sorts of things. They're then used to being on a tether and, and being controlled by that rope. So you have less difficulties managing your cows. So that's some advice I've got given and I've taken it and it's actually really worked really well. What is it about the roosters at this place that like to voice the, their opinion <laughs> when I'm trying to do a video? Here, he's activated the milk again and it's really flowing. So she's actually let down that next layer of milk that she had held up high in her udder and you can really hear it flowing. So I'll clean off the back cheeks that he, he sucked on. Step out. And you can see if, if we get close enough, Rocky, that her udder is actually chocolate block in there now because she's released it all into here so it's nice and full. So we just clean it to make sure we've got no calf saliva going in our milk. And now I tuck her tail up here so that it doesn't touch her teats as well, so that it all stays nice and clean. And then when this stops flowing, we will switch to the back quarter again. And then that'll all stop again and we'll do the same process. I'll just put the teats on the front, let him suckle and she'll let down another lot of milk. I've learned with her, she holds three layers of milk, so I can do that three times and she'll let down all that milk. Then once I let her out, um, she happens to find more and lets more down and feeds them and they get their full tummies and off they go. So they'll spend the day with her and then later tonight when it sort of gets on dark, they're really used to the routine now, we will bring them in here, feed them their calf pellets and separate them for the night. But we'll, keep, we'll do that on this video so you can see the process. She likes the lettuce, does she? Mm -hmm. 
Try like try to give her the whole thing, Gracie. Like, but hold it. No. See what she does. Let her have leaf by leaf. Yeah. She rips them out. She might waste it if she doesn't get leaf at a time. That she knows you're not going to hurt her. And bless you. Because that's when they're the most vulnerable when they're sleeping. They're not. She's not asleep. No, but laying down. Have you stopped chewing? If you read a book about cows, it'll tell you that. I should actually get into cows. I mean, I do like this cow. I reckon one day you'd be able to write a book about cows. <laughs> if I'm smart enough. You yeah, are smart you enough. Are. You trust me, I trust you. So we've finished milking and this little guy gets to they finish up all the rest of the milk. And I'm going to let them off. Thank you, Deirdre. See, she pumps that milk out with her stepping motion again. And we go. You can let Deirdre off. Thank you. Clam. Oh. Okay, so we've got a turkey here. I've just come down the back to fill up feeds. See this infected eye thing? I don't know what's causing it, but none of the others have got it. It's just this one. So what we use is this pink eye solution. It's for sheep and stuff, but it works wicked on, on this sort of thing. But before we do that, we're going to have a check. There's nothing coming out of it. Yeah, look at that. It's in its eye, Mum. Yeah, I know. Why are you doing it then? Because I gotta get it out. But now it's in the eye. See that? I don't know what causes it. I'll have to do some research, but it stinks, doesn't it? That one's not ready yet. Mum, I think it was from a bee. I think it was from a bee. Yeah, it stung it. Mum, that one's not ready yet. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to hold that open. It's okay, so we're done. Okay. And the kids broke the end of my can, mucking around with it. So this is going to be messy, but needs to happen. I've got to get a new can. Make sure the eyes open. Give it a good blast in there because it's... Uh, an antibiotic, so whatever's going on in here, it'll help. Hold it there, Jax. I'm hoping to sort of get. Don't. Well, that's the one she sees out of. See that? That's the one she sees out of, too, Mum. Yeah, she'll be able to see. This is designed for eyes, so that's why we'll. Make sure it gets in there. She can blink it all around. There we go. Good girl. Blink it all around. Do you want to gently take her back into the pen, darling? Let her feed her. Take her in where the food is so she can have a feed. Good job. Come. <clears throat> 
She wanted to be free, as if she was walking like this. <laughs> Not being able to. Good job. Thank you. So, we always come across little things like that where we've got to think on our feet. We always have a full medical kit range, which I I need to restock again because there's a few little lids broken. But, yeah, that's uh, how I treat it. I don't know what it is yet. I'll have to do some research, but that's how we treat it. Mum, did you like... So... This is our green okra, and then behind us here, we've got our crimson, crimson spineless okra. And you normally pick them before they get to this stage because they get quite woody. But I'm deliberately leaving them because I don't have any more seeds left. These were the last seeds I planted. But I have got myself, Gracie and I have been down picking them. Now, they're an they're, they're Usually an American thing, like I don't think a lot of people in Australia grow them, but they're actually really yummy. And I've done some research on them after hearing some good information on um, Jess, Jess from Roots and Refuges um, YouTube. They are actually really good for your gut. They've got what's called mucilage in them. I like them. it. Yeah, I like it too. It's like, it's very fresh. It's got a very sweet flavour. You eat the seeds and all. Do you but it's got a me? slimy texture. Which is the mucilage, which is really good for gut health. Mom, look at this baby and I have struggled with gut health actually since having kids. So I actually really quite enjoy this. It's really quite easy to grow too. I think it's in the um, marshmallow family. Right, that's what it looks like. It's really quite good. People use them in curries and things like that. You could use them in a casserole. Apparently you can slice them up and cover them in like a breaded coating and bake them. But yeah, they're really nice. I mean, fry them, sorry, not bake them. But yeah, they're really nice. You should give them a go. I just thought I'd share that too. We really like it, don't we, Grace? Ah! So we're going to pot up some banana pups from our banana palms, banana trees, whatever you want to call them. And we've had this sitting there for ages. It's a um, it's just all this crappy cow hay out of their out of their yard. So I'm going to put some of this in the bottom, just to stop the potting mix that I put in from leaking out. And you know, usually when you water it, it comes out the bottom of the hole. So plus, eventually, when the banana gets down to the bottom of the pot, it'll tap into a poop in here. And feed the banana because bananas are a very hungry plant. They like a lot of food. So they'll be able to eat. Now this is just temporary. We just need them in a pot until we find our place that we want to put them on the farm. And then we'll plant them out and start the food forest. This tub is obviously broken so it's going to go to the tip. Um, I try to do this with most of my plants, especially if they're a plant that likes a lot of food. Because um, it also stops the honey mix from escaping, which is so annoying. Pat it down. But it will still allow drainage, which is good. Everything needs a lot of drainage. So we've got two little pups here, so we're going to put those in the smaller bucket uh, pots and I'm just going to show you how, see, it's quite sturdy in there. So you just go between the pup and its adult plant and start working, maybe a bit trickier than I thought, start working your shovel down and as you get it down, you can start sort of prying it. Dig a little bit around it. It's solid here, isn't it? Take it under. Start. See how it's starting to move the banana? And then go around the next bit. Try and dig a little bit around the base. You hear it cutting through roots. That's fine there. They're okay with that, they develop more. Just prying it, see we're moving the banana. 
Sliding it down a bit more. Just leveraging it out gently. I'll move my shovel again. There we go. Leveraging it a bit. There we go. There we go. Now, if you have a look here, you have got all your root system. So what we're going to do, because we don't want it to go straight on top of this hay, is we're going to put a bit of the dirt that it came out of the ground so that it's, because it's used to growing in that dirt, and then we're going to pop it in, try and get all the roots in and push down in the pot so that none of them are exposed to the air. And then, see all this beautiful dirt out here? And compost. So it's actually used to growing here. It's happy in this spot. And the dirt underneath this tree is beautiful. Put that in there. Get the hay off the top of it. There we go. My weed seeds, thank you very much for that beautiful dirt. And then, once we've got enough dirt in there, let's put some right here, I think. Okay. Make sure that we tap it all down, make it nice and firm, and no air pockets. And then put some of this beautiful mulch on top to keep protecting it and there you have it so I'm going to do this four more times take this little guy out and I've got another one over there behind the cow pen that I'm going to take a few pups from and I'll show you at the end It's the afternoon now, and we've got to get these two in their nighttime pen. So Jackson's just getting some calf pellets, and we're going to get some pony maintenance pellets for Deirdre. That's what she usually has in the afternoon. She has an abundance of food, and we don't want her getting um, just wasting food. So Noah's going to film the process while we put the calves away for the night. So Grace is filling up the pig water again because the piglets tip it out all the time. Brock's down the back. His job is to lock away the chickens and turkeys. The guinea fowl go up at night so they don't have to be, we don't have to worry about them. The goats have already been fed and got water and everything. So but we still make sure they go up. Yeah, they, they definitely go up anyway. Um, and we're just waiting on Jackson to bring back some food for Dee and then we'll put them away. See this here, the chooks have scratched her and moved all the poop around. <gasps> so Grace is just getting the the water hose. The babies have got their little calf pellet feed. Deirdre's got some 
treats as well. And there's Miss Grace putting the water over. Do you want to grab it for her, Noah? Go around the other side. <laughs> Check out what Brock's doing. So, oh, the sky is so beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. So gorgeous. The weather's been just amazing. I love that little bit between summer and winter. It's autumn, I know, but just at the start of autumn where the sky gets all beautiful at night. And I love the little bit before spring. That is the guinea fowl going up. So we'll go down the back here. The goats are eating the bale of hay they got today. Hi Nibbles, Holly, Avon, Princess and Jackson's renamed his goat from Call of Duty because he said it's silly and he's called her Layla. So that's a pretty name. So we'll call her Layla from now on. And April. How you going, old girl? And Mr. Felix, he's on a tether at the moment because he's being super naughty. Rocky's down here. What you doing, son? Hey, okay. we've done all their waters and everything today. We've got this pen here all set up with food and water and on some green grass all ready for tomorrow. I'm actually getting a heap of Isa Brown hens. As you guys know from a previous video, look at these gorgeous things. Where's the fifth one? It's just in there. Down on the ground. Oh, there you are. Slower to get up. That's a boy. The big wattles are the boys. The little wattles are the girls. Can't really see from up here. They're gorgeous. I love them. Anyway, so I'm getting a heap of Isa Brown hens tomorrow. Because I'm going to start the experiment where I put buff, bra, sorry, Brahmas over the Isas and see what kind of babies they make. I'm hoping they make a, a bird that is a good meat bird and a good egg layer. So that's the experiment. Look at that sky. But we're going to send Holly off for processing because she's going in our freezer. She's four now and isn't producing piglets even though she's been in here with crackles for a long time Three. she no two years but she's also extremely aggressive and quite dangerous so i don't know what happened but she used to be lovely and let you pat her her tummy and stuff and now she's actually really violent and we're too scared to have the kids climbing the pen with her or anything like that she's become really aggressive yeah. and and really quite full-on so we can't have animals like that on our farmstead because we've got little kids as you know and it's too much of a danger or risk same would apply to a dog we have got rid of a dog before that uh, we got a nice home we didn't kill it but we got a nice home without children because for some reason when I got it from the breeder it had food aggression and try as I might could not get the food aggression out of this dog and it was just too dangerous Grace was a lot littler then she was only two and she knows obviously no boundaries with animals she gives them love all day every day and no there's no no break from that like she just doesn't know that the dog can't be around you know can't be around little kids while they're eating so yeah, we just don't take that risk. We've got a lot of really good friends that visit us a lot and they've all got little kids um, and they all come down and hang out with all the animals. So all the animals, including our our little buck goat, he is super friendly, never shown any signs of aggression or nastiness at all um, and that's just something that we're always going to, that's always going to be a priority for us, never to have an animal that's vicious. So, unfortunately, Holly's had four beautiful years. She's been loved and, and taken care of, and we've given her all all the best um, food and treatment and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, it's time for her to, to go to the butchers and be processed. And the two little girls that are going up over there when they're eventually old enough they 
they will be our little breeders and they will produce piglets that will eventually be our pork. Um, that's what that's what happens on a self-sufficient farm. And obviously we won't get super attached to those. We'll obviously be loving and kind to them because you should always raise everything with love and kindness and it should never know a bad day until its final day. So that's sort of my philosophy on it. Um, this took a bit of a turn. I wasn't planning to talk about that. But I was going to show you guys this. This is all our garden beds that have been taken up. Just waiting on the okra to finish growing and to go dry so that I can keep the seeds. Um, this is my summer or well, spring and summer garden and it's come to an end now. So just as the fruits ripen on the bush, if they're good for us and the rats and bloody whatever else is eating them at the moment haven't got to them, then we'll eat them. But if not, then those little piggies down there get them. Okay, so Brock left this for me to do because this is this is usually his nighttime regime. He's on mine. Sometimes I come down and do it too. If he's out or doing things, I'll be able to actually show you that little turkey hen that we treated today. And you'll see that this is her sleeping on the edge because oh, she's got the blue on her face. She's okay. She'll be healing up already, I reckon. That stuff that we used on her eyes is actually really amazing. Works extremely quick. This is our old boy, Mr. Gobbles. That's what the kids have named him. And this is our chook pen. I don't think I've brought you guys in here before. The ducks are in. The chickens are in. The buffs, buff Orpington stay up the top there. Oh, the light's not right. Can't wait to get more of them. So, yeah, the buffs stay up there. Ducks. They've all got different little huts and stuff. All the others are up the top and in their little huts. Did you close the door in there? No. I filled up everyone's food today. So we actually closed the door and put the rock against it. Brock's trying not to have her fall off her perch. Good job, Brocko. Then we put gently put the rock against it. She won't fall down. Thanks, buddy. But yeah, so the turkeys like to roost up high. I'll just go around here and show you. <laughs> look at them all. Just look at this. Yeah. Oh, look at these midgy things. I don't know if you can see them. But that's an automatic waterer. Make sure there's nothing behind here. I have actually noticed turkeys going back here quite a lot. Hey guys, good night. Tuck in for a good sleep. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that's from the beginning of the day all the way to the end of the day. Uh, there were bits in between obviously that I didn't document, like hanging out with the kids and doing homeschooling lessons, tidying and packing boxes, which is what we're doing at the moment, aren't we darling? Yeah. Oh, she went and got changed again. This girl loves to change her fashion constantly. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, yeah. oh don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Oh, yeah. And share. Commenting's great too. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.